going to show you now how I built a Mando cello. So I build mostly guitars, but I've always been interested in violin family instruments, and uh, I, I've built uh, double bass, I've built violins, I've never built a cello, and I always was interested in it. I love the voice, I love the sound of it. Yeah, so I thought I would try to build a mando cello. So you can see here that I have the electric mando cello and it's strung up with four courses and the, the lowest is C and the highest is A. C, G, D, A. Just like a cello. And uh, I put in some humbucker pickups. These are a, my friend Jim Barley, who's the wire expert, made these uh, specially for this project. And these have blades going across there so that each string gets uh, amplified. There's a, a neck pickup and a bridge pickup. And there is a switch that switches between neck bridge and then there's both up here and these are these are tone just like essentially like a Les Paul guitar as a a trapeze here and you can see let's get a close-up of that that's a ebony trapeze block and this is this the shape that you would see familiar in most um, semi-hollow guitars with that type and this part would be different I had to make this uh, specifically because it has eight strings this right here is a tunematic style bridge that I altered I took out the middle section that has the adjustable saddles and I put in a piece of ebony here and then uh, that allowed me to intonate the, the instrument so that the uh, the strings will play correctly all the way up at the neck. Uh, the pickup rings I had to make specifically for this size mini humbuckers um, and the fact that this is this is flat here. Um, the, the fretboard is 24 and 24 and three quarters scale so essentially it's a it's a Gibson scale uh, you can see the string spacing there you can see that the C string the two strings are farther apart and then they get closer together as they go down and that that has to be that way for it to play right. Um, it has a bone nut. It has a, and then here's the back. The back, I, I decided to, to do a, what we call a relic job. So somebody asked me, is, is, that a, is that an old instrument? Well, it's brand new, made to look old, which is a tradition in the violin world and it's getting more common in the guitar world and they call it relicking in the guitar world in the violins it's called antiquing but I wanted it to look like a cello so I did that kind of golden you can see the flames dancing a little bit it's it's nitrocellulose lacquer which is traditional for guitar electric guitars um, and it does not affect the, the tone too much as far as the type of finish. As far as this body goes, this body is uh, chambered. So this is a one-piece mahogany back and then right here in the back there's two cutouts so that this these parts are hollow. And then there's a down the center there's a it's it's solid um, I don't have one to show um, before I constructed it the the cap or the maple top 
is put on and you can see that it is actually tilted back. The neck is tilted back so that the strings will project to that height of the bridge. So right here, right about there, it starts sloping down. This, this right here slopes down. So you can kind of see there, you can kind of see that slope there. So this part of it is flat and then you can see it starts sloping down and that gives a tilt back to the neck a little bit so that it projects correctly so that the, the bridge is up there uh, at a good height and the strings, more importantly, the strings don't touch the frets. to make the instrument play similarly to a cello so I, I measured uh, an actual cello neck and uh, soon realized that it, it's just going to be real difficult to get the string spacing close enough so that it would play just like a cello but uh, I did my best uh, let me show you that here we have a cello neck with a broken ouch headstock um, and this measures 1.22 right there at the nut 1.22 and uh, so let's let's take a look at the the actual mando cello this one here I'll measure the nut and it's 1.5 so it's it's about a quarter of an inch larger and then now let's look at the string spacing so uh, I can see in these grooves here of this cello this is a full-size cello by the way and the string spacing is 0.87 from the C to the A and with this since there's two there's double courses it's going to be hard to determine but let's just say uh, like in between the courses and this is about 1.15 so it's a little bigger and that makes sense um, the spacing follows the strings follow the fretboard so that they're the, the, the right distance the same distance down here from the edge of the fretboard to the to the first edge of the C string about the same down here in other words they don't they don't go in uh, they don't fall off the edge that's a hard part to get right uh, when you're building a first instrument um, so it's a little bit about that the neck uh, thickness when you play a cello of course you're playing you know you're playing differently like this. Your position's a little different. Um, and your thumb, you know, it's it's going to be placed a little differently than when you're playing a guitar, of course, you know, guitar style. But players generally, of guitar players, generally like a substantial thickness of their neck at the nut. Some, some players like real thin, and other players like a, uh, what they call you know a baseball bat neck and but I would say most people are right in in between and it's not so much the 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 actual depth at the first as it is kind of this rounded shape it just has to feel smooth and right this neck what I did was I sprayed the lacquer on here and then I I removed most of it and just put some oil on it and it just feels like a smooth uh, neck very similar to a cello let me show you and and a violin family you, you don't you don't put varnish on the neck generally this one looks like it has a little bit but generally you kind of leave this silky smooth and so uh, 
I tried to follow that. Okay, so I'm going to let you hear how it sounds. Uh, let's start off with the, the neck pickup. Then the, I did this a little different. I wanted the neck pickup to be the most bold of all. So I put in a little bit of a hotter... instrument uh, they're they're generally a um, a melody instrument but there's a lot of underlying uh, harmony going on in most cello solo music and uh, that's what I'm interested to hear it's a good uh, instrument to um, accompany a higher pitched instruments you know it carries the low end I mean that's a low note. That's lower than a guitar. A guitar is an E, and this is a C, and it's nice and low. And this right here, that's a G, so that'd be the octave. So there's a G way up there. Um, so it's got a big wide range. Now, uh, people are probably curious. I did not build this instrument for any person. Uh, I, I didn't really build it to sell it. Um, I, I just wanted to see how it would turn out. I'm going to send it out to a cellist in Colorado by the name of Cal. And uh, my son lives out there, Quinn, and he's going to pick it up. And he's, he's a double bassist, uh, and a guitar, bass guitar, and a guitar player. So he, he'll try it out, and then we'll give it to Cal. And Cal will play a little bit. I'm not sure... Uh, I don't really expect him to make a a sound uh, recording of it or anything. I just want to see what he thinks and then uh, get it shipped back here and then uh, we'll see. Maybe if someone else wants to try it, uh, email me at Ken McKay, Ken at Ken McKay Guitar. I made a box uh, so that we can ship it back and forth. Let me just show you that box. It's a shipping crate that makes it easy to go back and forth. Um. So the top of this, I made a, uh, a... I made a cardboard box out of wood. And 
I just wanted to show that little tiny amp there. That's that's all we were using. So the sound is, you know, of course, is not that full <laughs> with that little tiny Yamaha amp. But uh, I have a basement, a Fender basement from the 60s downstairs, and it really sounds good with that, real full. Um, probably, uh, you know, either a guitar amplifier. Those guitar amplifiers are kind of filtered to sound a certain way. Uh, nasally, I guess, is a, is a term. Kind of, you know, almost like that kind of sound. Uh, rather than a full spectrum sound, uh, you know, more of a hi-fi sound that you hear um, with maybe an acoustic guitar or something. But it, it sounds good that way. Um, I can I could see it being used with some effects, like maybe a compressor. Sustain will continue as if uh, I was hoping maybe it would sound more like a bowed cello, uh, maybe some delay or something like that, uh, maybe some reverb, but it, it'll sound, you know, it'll sound the way you want it, uh, depending on what kind of music you want to play on it. Anyway, I wanted to uh, to show you what I built, and uh, I did make some in-process videos of me going through certain processes. I skipped a lot of stuff. It's hard to video yourself, but uh, here's here's a link to some of those other videos that show me building that. And I, I appreciate everybody looking in, in here and seeing uh, what I'm doing. And if you want to try the instrument, uh, or if you want to commission one, let me know. It's Ken at Ken McKay Guitars.